Okay. Wow, we've been through adjuvant therapy and I've done my chemotherapy. Things have been going great and doggone it, it's back. You know, so, so what do we do now? You know, one of the things I really like to do um, whenever we're talking about new um, therapies, changing therapies, starting therapies, we need to establish what the goal of that therapy is. So, so important. We all need to be on that same, same page. You know, when it's adjuvant therapy, you know, our goal is we're gonna kick this cancer's butt and it's not coming back. Well, we don't always, we're not always successful and sometimes it comes back. So, you know, the goal of um, therapy in the metastatic um, setting is really just to slow the progression of disease. This, unfortunately, um, we're not in a curable situation, but we are in a treatable situation, okay? This is not the breast cancer of 20 years ago. There are a lot of very young faces out here, but I know I've got some other seasoned nurses out here, yes? <laughs> oh, come on, wake up. <laughs> give, a, give a girl a, a breadcrumb, okay? So, you know, 20 years ago, it was a different story, but now we are looking at this as being more um, of a chronic disease, okay? So some type of therapy is going to be the new reality, you know? Um, it will be uh, maybe on and off, but this is the new reality for uh, the foreseeable future is some type of therapy. Now, their treatments may not seem nearly as aggressive as it was with um, the adjuvant therapy or the neoadjuvant therapy um, and what's given for that early disease, but we also need to remember that was a short-term thing, so we can be very aggressive. It's a short-term, we're gonna be able to recover. Now, because um, that was the goal was to get rid of the cancer. Now, again, we're looking at just managing this disease over the long term. So one of the things that we want to convey to our patients is, you know what, this is not a sprint, okay? This is a marathon, okay? Um, that, that we are in this for the long haul and that we really do need to balance um, the aggressiveness and our treatment now with, um, with a good quality of life. We want people to get out, they want to have a life, they want to see their family, see their friends go shopping. Um, I guess that was just me. So, um, but we, we want to have good days. We want to have more good days than bad days, okay? So a couple of really nice resources um, that you can direct your patients to, first of all, is the Living Beyond Breast Cancer website. They have a specific area that talks about what are the goals of therapy in the metastatic uh, setting. It's um, very... Uh, patient friendly. It's it's um, it, it's just a great resource. So you know this is a very long link, but if you just go to lbbc.org and then search from there, that's a great resource. And also my breast cancer story, and it talks about um, what to do once you've learned uh, that you have metastatic disease. So I'd recommend that you direct your your patients there. They're already out on the internet, and you know that. Um, and I always tell my folks that, you know, the internet can be your best friend, but it can be your worst enemy too. So if you can actually direct them to reputable sites, you're going to make um, their life easier and happier, and you're going to make your life really much better too, because they're not coming back with all this random stuff that you're like, I don't even know what to do with that. So. Okay, you know, and they've, we've, they've just heard that they've got metastatic disease, we need to continue on with therapy, and what is the first thing that they want to say? I do not want chemotherapy again. I've been there, done that, it was tough, I don't know if I could do it. Well, you know, the nice thing about this is the C, uh, CDK46 inhibitors, they're not chemotherapy, okay? They are not cytotoxic, okay? They are not going to directly kill the cancer cells, but what they are are cytostatic, okay? So they're gonna stop those um, proteins from signaling and going to stop those cancer cells from growing and dividing, okay? 
The thing to remember with that, that's not necessarily a permanent thing. Okay, so while you can stop the, the cancer from growing and dividing, and in some cases that does cause you know, apoptosis, which by the way is probably one of my favorite words ever. Um, I digress. So um, it can cause apoptosis, but um, it just is, is keeping those cells from, from growing and dividing. Okay, so one of the challenges I have for you is I want you to go home and I want you to develop some type of educational material on these specific um, drugs or really any new classes of drugs that come out. And I want you to think to yourself, you know, what are the questions, um, if you were in this situation, what are the questions that you would have? Or what are the answers to, to things that you want to see um, on on a, a little handout there. So, and finally, what are the questions that you need to be able to answer um, for your patients? Okay. So, <clears throat> we just went through a really wonderful but complex because cancer therapies are very, very complex mechanism of action of how these drugs work. That's not what you're gonna be telling to your patients. Now you can refer them to places that have this nice complex um, illustrations, but really, wh what do they wanna know? They wanna know, you know, is it gonna work and how's it really gonna work for them? So basically, the, the CDK4-6 inhibitors work to keep the disease stable. Okay, we're not, again, not necessarily killing them, but we're, we're keeping things stable. These drugs work inside the cell to keep it from growing and dividing. And when we couple it with your hormone therapies, your letrozole and fulvestrin, those type of drugs, they actually work on the outside of the cell. So we're having two different mechanisms of action to really shut that cancer down. Okay, now this also helps, um, like Dr. O'Regan was talking about, with um, hormone resistance. And that's a very, very complex thing. There's lots of papers out there and lots of theories about that. But one of the theories for this particular drug is that the, um, the cyclin D is overexpressed and that causing um, the cell to, to grow uncontrollably. And that's what this uh, particular drug does, is, um, is prevent that retinoblastoma protein from phosphorylating and, and causing that kind of chain reaction, okay? So this is working on the inside. Your hormone therapies are working on the outside. So it's two different uh, ways to, to function there. So managing the expectation, and this is kind of where it gets tricky. Um, you know, we've already talked about what the goal of therapy is, is, you know, we want stable disease. Um, but, you know, when it comes time for scans and we're looking at that measurable disease, everyone wants to see regression. Of course they do. Okay, and you know, in about 50, 55% of the folks, they will see some regression of their measurable disease, and so that's great. But on the flip side, so we have 50% that see a regression, that also means that we have 50% that aren't going to, okay? So that's where we have to keep coming back to the fact that we are in this for the long haul, we are here to control the disease and not have progression. We're looking at progression-free survival, not necessarily regression of the disease. So be very clear about that and probably before they have those scans. So, you know, when we come back and, and review those scans, then it's not a, a, a big surprise. Okay, so you know, I'm not, I'm not going to be surprised if we just uh, see stable disease. That's okay. Regression, always what we're hoping for, but a really close second is stable disease. And again, you know, our patients, they want to get out there and they want to get on the internet and take a look. Well, show them where to go. Show them what these trials are. Show them that Paloma trial. Spell it out for them, P-A-L-O-M-A. 
okay? <laughs> Let them get on there. Let them see that in the frontline therapy that this doubles their progression-free survival, okay? She knew that I didn't want to do the IV chemotherapy, um, but she had already decided that her first uh, level of treatment was going to be this new drug. And um, she was very positive about that and said that it had just um, got off of clinical trials and that it um, extended um, life expectancy with um, fewer side effects uh, than the chemotherapy um, with the IV. Okay. 